Hi everyone, Simon here. I hope you've been enjoying this series as much as I've enjoyed researching about it and putting it together for you. We can all understand now pretty clearly that the recording zone of a true single fibre EMG needle is absolutely tiny, but why does it have to be this way? Well, there are a number of reasons for that and let's delve into it right now. So the ideal electrode is one that isolates the desired signal, but also has reduced contamination from surrounding field generators. So in this case, that would be surrounding muscle fibers generating their action potentials too. In addition to which, the signal that's then generated and picked up has to then make its way through the amplifier system and the oscilloscopes um, in order to be processed. And that's got to be of sufficient amplitude and size and quality in order to be useful signal that can be processed properly. So the true single fiber EMG needle actually ticks a lot of boxes in order to do this in the following ways and we'll just get into all of this straight away. First of all, there's the actual size of the recording area. The relationship between the true single fiber EMG needle is really one to one with the muscle fibers in contact with it as opposed to maybe two or three with the facial needles um, and therefore those are more likely to contain signal generated from those other muscle fibers and it's no wonder that one sees shouldering as a, as a frequent uh, contamination uh, issue when one's trying to do single fiber studies with the facial needles. The next thing to consider is distortion and this is really fascinating because the act of recording is not passive. What do I mean by that? When we stick the needle in it's actually causing a distortion of the electrical field potentials around it and that distortion is the greatest closest to the generating source, in our case the, the muscle fibres, and it's actually pushing away that good signal that it's trying to detect especially with a larger uh, needle being present and it's having a greater distortion basically and so therefore the bigger the needle the greater the shunt and therefore the less signal that's being brought through so in terms of the concentric needle electrodes they are actually losing signal because the presence of that larger recording surface is actually pushing away signal generating uh, isopotential lines. The next interesting uh, point as well is with the true single fiber EMG needles, there's this layer of insulation around the recording surface. And that has something called a wall effect, which actually causes an amplification of signal up to two times. And that's really important to get a better quality of signal through into your amplifier as well. So on the one hand, the concentric needle electrodes, which we tend to use, naturally push away useful good signal and on the other side the true single fiber EMG needles are actually doubling the amplitude by the way that they are insulated with this wall effect. Another interesting thing to consider is something called the fall off with distance and Eric Stahlberg beautifully showed this that the true single fiber needle EMG as you move the needle away from its source generator the signal in its amplitude drops pretty dramatically and that's not quite the same with the concentric needle electrodes and so when you're having more distant uh, field generators to the needle as is the case um, with the concentric ones being at more in play one's actually getting more contributory signal from those distant ones into your overall signal being picked up at the electrode. The final point with distortion is that Whilst we've talked about shunting uh, having uh, a greater effect with larger needles closer to the source of the generator, distant generators with larger needles have less of an attenuation from shunting than with the smaller recording surfaces. And so therefore those further field generators are being less affected by shunting with a larger one than with the true single fiber EMG electrodes, which is a bit, bit confusing, but basically what that means is, is that there's more cross-contaminant coming into your um, needle electrode. So just basically to summarize everything over here, we've got an optimum ratio of small recording zone to muscle fiber, so that's inherently good. We've got reduced shunting away of good signal. You have wall effect magnification as well, which is a good thing, and you have rapid fall off, 
causing a reduction of cross contaminants um, into the overall signal apart from the actual ratio of recording zone to muscle fibre. So the sum of all of that is that you need to have less uh, requirement for electronic filtering to get your signals nice and clean and that of course also has the benefit of having less signal attenuated by that process and so you end up having nice larger cleaner signals which you can then process and there are other aspects to this as well but this is the reason why true single fiber EMG needles are made the way they are they have these inherently good properties to study true single fiber action potentials which is really not the same case with the concentric needle electrodes at all. And we'll be exploring the effects of that in practical terms in subsequent videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you have, please do support the channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and hopefully see you soon in the next